What's going on ladies and gentlemen, we are going to go through Dana White's Contender Series 2024 Week 1. Uh, we have five fights coming tomorrow night, Tuesday the 13th at around, what is it, 6 o'clock? 7 o'clock Eastern Time. Uh, it's actually not a bad card, some uh, really good prospects actually coming up. I'm just going to run through it quick, give you guys a little quick uh, breakdown, prediction, betting thing, whatever it's called. Uh, I'm just going to try and do a quick, trying to do three videos in one night. Uh, gotta get to it. Here we go. Gonna butcher the names. Antoine Ho versus uh, Loner Cavan Cavana Cav Cavana whatever. Loner Cavana versus Antoine Ho. I'm going Antoine Ho. Uh, he is in the MMA lab. He is with Sugar Sean O'Malley. Uh, he's with uh, who's the other one? Uh, where is he? He's at the top here. Benson Henderson. Uh, he's got, uh, fuck, what's Sean's coach's name? I'm, I'm drawing a blank here, Sean, uh, sh Sugar, Sean's coach. Tom Welch, or Tim Welch. I forgot about that. He does a podcast with him. It's pretty good. Uh, Tim Welch, I'm sure Tim Welch has trained with Twan uh, a little bit. Uh, Loner, it just seems to leave himself open sometimes. He really likes to throw, like, extended combinations, tag, move, tag, and move. Um... I feel like Antoine is probably just going to chase him down and probably just hold him uh, against the cage. Probably is where he's going to win. If he leaves Kavanaugh open in order, like, and leaves him range, uh, Kavanaugh's going to be able to do his, his flashy tricks. Uh, he is pretty... He's not bad. Like Both of these guys are really good. The odds are a little wild. Like Plus 190 is a little wild. It is a little bit closer on DraftKings. It is plus 150 for Antoine Ho. I'm going to take the side of plus 150 just because I think the highlight's a little, little bit better than Loner. I think he's going to be able to piece him up on the uh, inside, not the outside. If Tuan's able to close the distance, I think he's going to be able to prosper a lot better than he would uh, eating the kicks and you know the spinning heel kicks and the uh, you know the the very good jab from loner so uh as long as he goes in go, grabs for the double leg or keeps him against the cage and does some nice clinch work i think he's gonna be able to grind out a nice three round victory both of these guys are kind of powerful i can kind of see it going three rounds just because usually when you see two very powerful guys they're gonna end up respecting each other's power and you're gonna see them later in the fight uh, next on the card, we have Jose Miguel Delgado versus Ernie Juarez. I'm not sure. I'm going uh, Jose Miguel. Uh, he's incredible with his hands. I think Ernie's just going to be a little too, like, you know, kind of, like, uh, confused on, like, how to approach him like jose jose is very nice with his hands bro and i think ernie being the smaller fighter having a bit of a range problem i think he's gonna have to close the distance if he's gonna look to try and do anything against jose and i am i'm i'm quite confident that jose is gonna be able to keep him off of him he does have decent takedown defense uh ernie is kind of like he's just kind of a walk down guy and i think if jose is able to stop him for the first five minutes i think Ernie might just fade. So I'm going to take the side of Jose. I think he's going to be able to get a knockout over Ernie. Um, you like genuinely do not be surprised if you uh, if you see Ernie go for constant takedowns, constant against the cage work. I just, I, I'm confident in the fact that Jose is going to be able to piece him up on the outside and just stay away from his bullshit. Uh, next on the card, we have Bruno Lopez versus Mikael uh, Sajanani. I'm, again, I'm butchering the names. I don't really care. I'm not picking Bruno Lopez. Bruno Lopez, before his fight with Bren, uh, Brenson Habero, he used to walk you down and throw punches. Now he steps back and throws punches and then like tries to like blitz you. It's kind of weird. Mikael is not a guy to blitz. He's crazy fast on his feet. He's not a guy to fuck with, bro. He's really, really fast with his hands. He has incredibly fast combos. And I think Bruno Lopez is going to do um, the same mistake that he did to Hibero. I think he's just going to leave his chin exposed. I think that when Bruno uh, overextends combinations, he tends to leave his chin like, bro, he, he will literally throw a hook like this. He drop. I don't know why he drops his. He drops the left hand and he goes like over. It's so weird, bro. He does not. He, uh, just 
I'm going to pick the side of Mikael. I think the underdog is going to be able to pull through. I think the Georgian will be inside the UFC. And I think he's going to be able to knock out Bruno Lopez. I think it's just, it's close. It might go to a decision, but Bruno Lopez just seems to fade after the first round. He did look decent against Marcos Bragago, but in the first round, dude, like, he was throwing combos and he looked super, super sloppy. He fell to the floor. He slipped on the floor in the first, like, two minutes. Mikael is not, he's going to piece him up. He should. Uh, I, I, yeah, I'm just going to stick with the side of Mikael. Or, and if they give you an over, under, under one and a half rounds. Next on the main card, these lines are wrong, but we have Men Ding versus Remy Hamid. I'm going Men Ding. The Ruthless, the Ruthless Assassin is going to knock out Remy. Uh, Remy's half decent. You know, he has some decent leg kick TKOs over uh, some bums. But Men Ding is just, you know, he, he's fought way more experienced guys. He's fought for a much longer time. He's only 29 with 40 fights on his belt. Some of these might be padded fights, but still, like, he is fighting guys that are really good, and he's knocking them out cold. Um, yeah, I'm going to go Mending by KO, probably first round. I just, I don't think Rami's going to have anything for him, and I think if Rami tries to keep distance and tries to, like, I don't know, try and pull up some combos, Men's just going to fucking jab the shit out of him. He's got five or four inches on him, so uh, he's definitely not going to let the, the the kid get through. Uh, Mending is going to take the spot in the UFC and I'm excited. Excuse me. A little bit of mic trouble here. I'm excited to see Mending in the UFC. I think he's going to be really uh, impressive and I think he's going to be a big, big uh, addition to the welterweight roster. I think he's going to be able to get to the top 25 quite quickly. Uh, and I think uh, you guys would enjoy his fights when he does do so. Uh, we're going to go to the main event now. Mansur Abdul Malik versus Wes uh, Schultz. I'm going Wes Schultz. Wes Schultz is sitting at a plus 300. I do believe that is because Mansur is a very good wrestler. He kind of starts fights just by clinching you and taking you straight down. Wes Schultz had very impressive takedown defense against uh, Ad or no, it's not Adlin against Dylan Budka. Uh, the the what is this? The something Hulk, whatever. Um, the Unstoppable Hulk, I think that's his name. Wes Schultz was able to reverse the position against Dylan Booker. He was able to take Dylan Booker's back. He was able to lose that fight 29-28, winning the first round, but gassing out a little bit. And I think throughout the years, Wes has looked a little bit better. He hasn't really seen a second or third round, but I think think he might be able to get a choke off on Mansoor or knock him out. Um, Mansoor just doesn't, he doesn't really have experience. He's kind of fighting shitty guys. Like, if, like, it just doesn't look good, man. I feel like this line's a little fucked. Like, just a little fucked. Like, this fight's at middleweight, man. This fight's at middleweight. He fought at 204. He's cutting 20 pounds. He's gonna be a big boy. I don't know how that's going to affect him. Maybe he looks insane, dude. Seriously, maybe he's coming down to 185 and he's going to look unreal. He just hasn't fought the level of competition that Wes Schultz had. Like, Dylan Budka is a, a, a... It's good enough for me, okay? Like, Maurice Morris... Bro, like, good enough for me, okay? He was he was 6... Or 5-3 and three when he fought him. Like, it's good enough for me. Like, he, he's not... He's not shit... Like he's not super terrible. He's fought bums, but if you watch, if you watch, um, if you watch Maurice fight, he's not that bad. Like he's not super terrible. I just don't see a reason to pick Minsoor at this point. If you skip the fight, skip the fight, man. It's gonna be a half decent fight. I just don't. I think West Schultz is gonna get Minsoor to a second round. I think Minsoor is gonna shit his pants. I don't. I don't think he's gonna know what to do. I think the big weight cut, like cutting back twenty pounds. After not that long, right? Because he's already fought this year, right? He's cutting 20 pounds after six months. You know, you have to put back on the muscle that you're losing after you're cutting all that weight. I'm going Schultz, man. I just... I trust that he's going to be able to deal with the power of Malik in the first, you know, round. And I think Wes Schultz is going to be able to put, put, put some shit on the boy, okay? Put some shit on the boy. Um... That's all I got for you guys. He's not... He, they're both in decent camps. I mean, Wes has got some nice coaches in his corner. I mean, I'm, I'm just... I'm confident that he's going to be able to pull it through. Um, that's all I got for you guys right now. 
I'm going to head off, do the other two videos. They should be out today. They should be out tomorrow, either Tuesday the 13th or Wednesday the 14th. Uh, I will be streaming the card most likely tomorrow the 13th. And I will also be streaming the card, what is it, the 19th? The 17th Saturday for UFC 305? Yes, UFC 305, Duplessis versus Adesanya, where Adesanya is going to knock out Duplessis. Or Duplessis. I, I call him Duplessis. I can't call him Duplessis. Whatever the fuck the announcers call him, I can't do it. Anyway, guys, that's all I got for you. I hope you guys enjoy. If you guys want to do a parlay, I would do, personally, Men Ding, um, Jose Miguel Delgado, and Antoine Ho. Or, or I mean, you can do Mikael if you want, but I like Antoine Ho. Uh, that's all I got for you guys. Peace.